Attention Colombians, while you're struggling to make ends meet, the country's elites are handing out million dollar contracts like candy. Today, I'm going to tell you the incredible story of the San Martin building, a monument to shamelessness where the shady dealings of the first lady's closest friends are hidden. Public contracts awarded by hand, friendships worth millions, the most shameless corruption at the highest level. Stay, because what you're about to hear will make you doubt whether there is a government in Colombia or just a gang sharing out the... The empty chair revealed million-dollar contracts from a person close to Veronica Alcoser. The story of the San Martin building and its peculiar network of contracts is one of those stories that seem taken from a conspiracy novel. It is the pure reality of Colombian politics. As they say in my neighborhood, many coincidences are no longer coincidences. Here we are seeing a very interesting or rather suspicious pattern which involves figures close to presidential power, million dollar contracts, and of course, a dose of family influence. The San Martin building, which in case anyone had forgotten, belongs to the National Police Salary Fund. It is not just a pile of bricks. Since 2004, its administration and leases have been under the control of the Promotora de Comercio Inmobiliario SA, a company that, until recently, did not make much noise. But oh, how things change when friends of power arrive. Giovanni Mauricio Vargas Uribe, a Colombian businessman with operations in Panama, controls the developer. So far, so good, right? But the juicy stuff comes when we start to unravel the family ties. Marta Plata, Carolina Plata's sister, joins the board of directors of the developer. It doesn't sound so important until you realize that Carolina is one of the best friends of Veronica Alcocer, the first lady of Colombia. And of course, when you have a friend at the top, the doors don't just open, they fly off the hinges. Marta Plata, as if it were nothing, begins to make informal visits to the offices of the Department of Social Prosperity, DPS, and other key government locations. And what happened next? Well, miraculously, the real estate developer won the multi-million dollar contract to house the DPS offices in San Martin. But wait, that's not all. In addition to the DPS, other government entities are also moving into San Martin, as if it were the only building in all of Bogota. The Ministry of Agriculture, the SAE, the National Electoral Council, even the National Intelligence Directorate is there. In other words, if you want to find half the government, you only have to take a stroll through San Martin. The interesting thing is that before Marta Plata arrived at the board of directors, the developer did not invoice more than 6,000 million pesos a year. However, after her entrance on the scene, boom, contracts for more than 46,000 million. What a streak of good luck. Or, as a Colombian would say sarcastically, that's prosperity. And the cherry on the cake is Marta Plata's mysterious visit to Jonathan Ramirez, the secretary general of the DPS, who was later expelled for a scandal related to bid rigging. Let's see, is it normal for a person from the board of directors of a company to go visit the secretary of a public entity just before a million dollar contract is decided? That is what we could call opportunism at its finest. And of course, the contract ended up in the hands of the company of which Plata is a part. A coincidence or maybe not? This is where Colombian sarcasm begins to shine. We are faced with a textbook case of how friendships in high places can be extremely lucrative. Veronica Alcocer and her close circle benefiting from public contracts. What a surprise. Well, it is not a surprise, but it is still scandalous. We have seen before how certain friends of power end up with their pockets full, and it seems that this time will not be the exception. And meanwhile, the entities that are supposed to be ensuring transparency and justice seem to be busy moving to the San Martin. Because, of course, it's easier to turn a blind eye when you have a comfortable office in a luxury building, right? Plus, as any average Colombian would say, you can't complain if the party keeps going. This story has it all. Power, money, influence, and of course the perfect dose of cynicism, which leaves us wondering if all this is really a coincidence or if, as the popular saying goes, where there's smoke, there's fire. In my opinion, what convenient coincidences well, well, but who would have imagined that the San Martin building, that brick mastodon in the heart of Bogota, would be involved in a story so full of coincidences? You would think that, with so many buildings in the city, that particular one wouldn't have much to tell. But it turns out that it is more interesting than it seems, especially when you start digging a little between contracts and well-positioned friends. The magic of Colombian bureaucracy. Take a look. It turns out that this building, owned by the National Police Salary Fund, is licensed to a company that sounds very respectable, the real estate trade promoter, a name so bombastic that it seems to come from a Garcia Marquez novel. And that developer? Who runs it? Well, a businessman with businesses in Colombia and Panama, Giovanni Mauricio Vargas Uribe, who surely has his office with a view of the sea in Panama City, because here in Colombia, well, it's better not to rent anything to anyone if they're not a friend of the government, right? Now, the juicy part 
This developer is like the life of the party in the highest spheres of power. Since Marta Plata, a close friend of the presidential family and the first lady herself, Veronica Alpocar, landed on the board of directors, contracts began to rain down as if Bogota had its own economic deluge. How lucky some are, you can't even win a raffle, but here contracts worth billions appear as if by magic, coincidence after coincidence. Speaking of coincidences, Marta Plata is Carolina Plata's sister. And who is Carolina? Veronica Alcocer's best friend, no less. What a support network. If friends are like that, who needs political campaigns? Apparently, a visit to the offices of the DPS, Department of Social Prosperity, was enough for this developer to get a big contract. And who was the host on that visit? None other than Jonathan Ramirez, the then General Secretary of the DPS, who was later expelled for, well, let's say some slight irregularities in another tender. But of course, those are small details. The important thing here is that after that visit, the developer got a juicy contract of 46,000 million pesos. Not bad for a company that previously didn't earn even half of that in the whole year. This is what we call in Colombia growing overnight. Although in this case, it seems that it was from one coffee to another in the offices of some ministry. And of course, if we add up the other contracts of the SAE, the Ministry of Agriculture, the National Electoral Council, and how many public offices need to rent a space, one wonders, are they doing promotions? Lease today and we'll give you a government contract for free. And this is where sarcasm is served on a plate. How many coincidences can we bear before we start to think that they are no longer coincidences? It's like when you go to a casino and you always get the same number on the roulette wheel. Let's see. Maybe the power connections have a slightly heavier hand than we want to believe. Of course, the government is very efficient, but only for its friends. But let's not worry. Surely all this is perfectly normal or not. A friend of the first lady contracts for millions, mysterious visits and revealing audios. What a coincidence. Colombia is a country so full of those little surprises that at the end of the day, all we can do is laugh, that or cry. But it's better to laugh, right? What is clear is that in Colombia, if you don't have a best friend in the presidency or you're not part of the inner circle, you'll most likely end up standing in line for Sisben. But if you know the wife of the president's best friend or if you organize the birthday party for someone in the palace, well, maybe the next lease contract will fall from the sky for you. And how? Anyway, here we are still waiting for one of these coincidences to cross our paths because the truth is that it seems that in this country, opportunities fall where there is already power and friendship. For the rest, let's see if we can get a contract in the next round of government coincidences. At the end of the day, what we are seeing is a very clear pattern. In Colombia, power is concentrated in the hands of a few. And those few have no problem using their influence to line their pockets while the rest of the country sinks into poverty. What more proof do we need? Friends of the First Lady, multi-million dollar contracts, mysterious visits. All of this is no coincidence. It is the reflection of a government that favors its friends while ignoring the real needs of the people. This is corruption in plain sight and no one says anything. So now you know, Colombians, if you don't have a friend in the highest echelons of power, get ready to keep waiting in line. Because here, opportunities only fall from the sky for those close to the palace. But what do you think about all this? Coincidences or a network of corruption that continues to be covered up among them? Leave me your opinion in the comments. I want to hear what you think. And don't forget to share this video, because the only way for these truths to come to light is if we all know them. See you in the next video, where we will continue to uncover what others want to hide.